fetal edema at that point of time the summary doesn't mention whether there was jvp or not but chest showed bilateral basal crepitations other system examination was normal so we have a patient who has come with gtcs pulmonary edema with hypertensive emergency around the peripartum period so prior to delivery one day and after that two days so our differentials at this point of time was whether it was an eclampsia or it was a press or because it was two days post the delivery and she was still sick and had not shown any signs of improvement atypical ttp or hus was also considered but hus we considered least likely because there was no prior ag like symptoms other differentials were acute fatty liver of pregnancy the seizures we were attributed maybe there was dyselectrolytemia at that point of time or toxin induced or whether it was a stroke so the initial evaluation showed anemia hb of 8 with thrombocytopenia platelet was 72000 with some elevated counts peripheral smear showed normocytic normochromic anisocytosis microcytosis poikilocytosis and tear drop cells the retic count was 2.38 the corrected retic was 2.2 which was still high and urine routine showed uh, hematuria and proteinuria her ldh was 8950 so there was a hemolytic process going on however the coombs test was negative to look for other possible differentials that we had told we had sent electrolytes potassium was 5.7 creat was 2.77 she also had a renal dysfunction her tbdb was normal albumin was slightly low 2.3 and transaminitis was present however alfos was normal she had a mri done outside which showed features of press cvt or any other cva was ruled out from the, from that imaging and um, so we have a hemolytic anemia with renal dysfunction and there's some transaminitis according to our differentials we did a etiological workup she, she had normal pt apt ina so fatty liver of pregnancy was ruled out and she did not have any clinical resolution despite being more than 72 hours post delivery so eclampsia help syndrome all of those went off our differentials dct was negative autoimmune workup was negative ana vasculitis workup was negative on the peripheral smear cystocytes were 2% so our next top differential was ttp so we sent adam ts 13 level which was 2.2 which was very low so Our differential was atypical TTP with press. So this was her Adam TS thirteen levels, which was two point two percent and no inhibitor. Uh, so at this point of time, we had she, because she had renal uh, dysfunction, we had involved the nephro team, did a biopsy, we had the um, uh, histopathologically proven TMA as well. So our differential at this point of time was congenital thrombocytopenic purpura because Adam TS thirteen levels were very low. There was no inhibitor at that point of time. She had renal and uh, a transaminitis with a hemolytic anemia. This was a thought process at that point of time. We had started her on Plex. This was under nephro. She had received five days of intensive Plex, followed by which she required multiple sessions of hemodialysis. The indication of which was anuria. she improved and then she was kept under follow up with monthly plex this was till 20 20 february and after that because of covid she was lost to follow up so this was at this till this point of time our thought process was probable congenital t t uh, ttp which worsened with our pregnancy we had a biopsy proven tma as well all her hematological and renal par parameters improved with plex and she lost to follow up then she comes back to us again in 2024 at 19 weeks of gestation despite being advised against pregnancy this time her risk factors were uncontrolled chronic hypertension but when she came at 19 weeks there was no evidence of preeclampsia we had done adam ts 13 levels and all the tma workup it was all negative at this pregnancy adam ts levels were normal so usually in a con in a congenital ttp the adam ts 13 levels are shown to be persistently low but our case the adam ts 13 levels returned to normal during admission in our hospital she had severe preeclampsia urine albumin was persistently 4 plus positive and her bps were not controlled even with 4 5 antihypertensives so at 24 weeks of gestation we terminated the pregnancy in view of severe preeclampsia this is the current pregnancy parameters where we see the tma parameters are all negative so what are the possibilities at this point of time so we thought whether it was an acquire ttp of unidentified mechanism or another in, in other words previously they called it as an immune 
immune ttp without detectable antibody levels currently a french registry has released a new paper uh, saying that it's a separate mechanism where we don't have any identifiable levels and they best because adam ts 13 levels without treatment had normalized so i would want to highlight in this presentation uh, ttp in pregnancy a few uh, uh, outline about epidemiology when do we suspect ttp how do we diagnose and how do we treat it's a very uh, rare disease this was a 2024 french registry paper where um, they had 1000 174 patients with tma out of which 108 had uh, postpartum onset ttp only 29 of those patients had congenital ttp the other 79 were 52 of immune ttp which is acquired ttp um, with the identifiable antibody and 27 per, uh, patients with it, which is 25% had unidentified mechanism ttp when do we suspect this is from a uk based study where they have shown that um in acquired ttps the common uh, presentation most patients come to us very sick and they have proteinuria they have uncontrolled bps they have headache they can have tias they can have uh, uh, epilepsies and have cardiac manifestations renal impairment so it's like a multi system disease and uh, this is from uh, from the french registry the new uh, uh, terms where they've compared and uh, shown us how each ttp present i would wa just want to highlight how our patient common patients present with usual presentation is at 28 uh, uh, age and gestational age would be 34 weeks and usual uh, patients present at the second uh, second gravida and usual parity is known to be one uh, the cl common clinical features that we see is aki which our patient had and high blood pressure neurological symptoms and biochemical parameters commonly described are elevated ldh which is in to more than 2000s um, uh, thrombocytopenia low hemoglobin and elevated creatinine and when we see in um, every trimester the most common uh, presentation will be in the third trimester or in the peripartum period which is how our patient also presented so we use this scores plasmic score and french score when we suspect it ttp but in my patient the plasmic score was actually 3 which was low risk however in the first pregnancy however she had the risk of uh, severe adam ts deficiency according to this score was 0 the score according to validation has sensitivity of 90 and specificity of 92% but there is a disclaimer at the end which which says even if plasmic score shows low risk and a patient we clinically suspect it is tma we send adam ts 13 levels it is low it is ttp the score does not help in this so a clinical suspicion is more important than all these scoring systems and this is the follow up of patients with uh, unidentified mechanism ttp three patients among the uh, uh, 26 had subsequent pregnancy they did not have relapse they had normal live birth so uh, this is one thing i wanted to highlight because usually when there is ttp we tell patients not to become pregnant because it is a high risk that ttp usually relapses and in congenital ttp the relapse is almost like 100% so we usually advise against but this registry shows that they can actually go ahead with pregnancy in congenital ttp they actually require monthly profile access with plexin so how to differentiate from other pregnancy associated tma just to highlight that if it is preeclampsia or help it usually resolves within 72 hours if a patient does not improve beyond 72 hours it means we have to think ttp as a uh, a differential and severe neurological involvement also shows more towards a ttp that's one thing i wanted to highlight in this slide other all things are actually common between um, among all these tma like disorders how do we manage as we saw we send cbc ldh all the hemolytic workup we also see the fetal ultrasound we do organ damage assessment and we send adam ts 13 levels to confirm our diagnosis management it is plexing with steroids uh, i don't want to go into the details because it's off my time i just wanted to ask one question usually plexing is done with cryo precipitate however in ttp the uh, cryo used is a cryo supernatant the reason is that the pathology in ttp is von willebrand factor forming large multimers so cryo precipitate is rich in von willebrand factor so plexing is done with cryo supernatant which is poor of the von willebrand factor 
um, and uh, subsequent pregnancies, as I had highlighted, it is the it is dependent on the severity of Adam TS13 levels. In my patient, the Adam TS13 levels were actually normal, but we had to terminate because of severe preeclampsia. If she didn't have all those complications, maybe she would have had the baby safely. So learning points would be congenital TTP in pregnancy and how to differentiate between TTP and other um, TMA-like syndromes. How do we identify, diagnose, and manage? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? From anyone? So uh, it, uh, the first time, uh, what? How did we? Uh, how did we diagnose that it was congenital? We had some other workup to look on. for other causes. So uh, autoimmune and all of those things we had ruled up only with the Adam TS thirteen levels we had made that diagnosis. It was two point two, which was actually very low. And she had had uh, uh, monthly plex just till COVID. Ah, uh, till COVID, Feb twenty. And when she came back, she had a normal. Oh. Thank 